Today I'm going to talk about Node.js and give you guys an introduction to the other side of web development, the server side. So, um, in the first few weeks, we talked about, talk about the client side, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's what you used to see what, like, to build whatever we see in the web browsers. And last week, um, Pramod and site talked about REST APIs. And it's the interface that we use to talk to web browsers. So we could make GET requests, POST requests, or any other kinds of requests to different URLs to get the data we want or have the changes that we want. And today, we're going to talk about the server, which is also called the back end. And for this lecture, we're going to um, be coding our server in Node.js. So you might be wondering, what are your server use, servers used for, or why do we need them? So um, when you have a website, you cannot um, load data from the internet or save data. So if you had a notes application and you want to save some notes, as soon as you refresh the page, you would lose everything. So servers will help us do that. Um, another use case is authentication. So sometimes you might have protected data, like Facebook friends or emails. And you need to make sure that the correct user is logged in before he can see the information. So servers are also used for that. Um, the third use case is dynamic, web, dynamic websites. So, so far, the websites we're building, like whenever you go to the web page, you get the same result. Um, with dynamic web pages, the results issues are usually generated on the back end before they come to the client. So this is how Facebook gets its news feed. When you go to Facebook, it doesn't have a copy of your HTML file on the server, but it generates it based on the logged end user. So um, why did we decide to use Node.js? So first, Node.js is JavaScript on the server. So if we use Node.js, we don't need to learn any other programming language. Whatever we use on the client, we could just go and add to our server. Um, so Node.js comes as a set of modules, um, or you could think of them as Java classes. Um, and each module has some functions that you could use. So there's um, the file system module, which lets, which lets us read and write files. Sockets modules just make socket connections to different um, devices. HTTP and HTTPS gives us um, a way to create servers and make HTTP requests. Crypto is used for um, security and hashes. Um, query string is used just for um, web browsers, so it lets you parse the data that's um, sent from the URL. Um, and there are much more than that, so let's try to look at some. Um, so this is the Node.js documentation. And you can see that there is a page for every module that Node.js provides. Um, we have a lot of them. So um, cluster module is used to let you do multi-threading. So if you have a, um, you're running something that could use multiple CPUs, you would use the cluster module for that. Um, DNS is domain name systems, ser I mean service. Um, yeah, and OS would let us look at the operating system stuff, so what platform are we using, how many CPUs do we have, what memory do we still have available. Um, there are a few of them, and if you click on them, so let's say path, we could see all the functions that are inside this module that we could use in our Node.js application. Um, So I know I've been throwing the word module out there and uh, many new things. So if anybody has any questions, please just interrupt me so um, I could go into more details or better explain it. Um, so enough talking about Node.js. Let's see what the code looks like. So first, let's write a small application to read and write files. Um, so I'm going to open Sublime text. Um, And I'm going to make a new file, and I'll save it on my desktop for now and call it um, fileaccess.js. But the file name doesn't matter, so you can call it whatever you want. I just chose that. So to access files, we would need to use the fs module. And you know, in Java, uh, whenever we want to import a class, we would say import like java.util.scanner. So in Node.js, um, it's a little different. So instead of using import, what we would use is require. So require 
um, fs. So this means we want to um, import the fs module, which is the file system module. But there is another thing. So um, Node.js doesn't have that concept of packages in Java. So if someone else has a module, if you call your module fs and someone else has the same name, they did not want like both modules to conflict. So instead of importing the module as fs, you could store it in any variable and use it. So we could call it file system. And then by using file system, we could actually read stuff. So we could say file system dot read. Or we could just use the shorthand, uh, which is fs, which I'll be using. Um, so now that I imported this, I have access to all of the file system um, functions. So let's try one of the functions. Um, so I want to, I'll say fs dot um, read file sync. And this is a function that reads files synchronously, which means that it would block the program until the contents of the file are read from disk, and then it stores them in a variable. Um, so I'll read the file hello.txt, and I'll save the content and content. And then what I want to do is, let's try to write a file. So writing files is also easy. All we do is fs.write file sync. Uh, we put the name of the file that we want. So let's call it hi.txt. And then we give it the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the content that I had. So I'll say content. And print it, put it in a different file. So basically, I'm copying hello.txt and saving it as <coughs> hi.txt. And then after that, I would say console.log, which is like system.out.print. Um, I'll say file copied. I will save this file, and since I don't have a file called hello.txt, I'm going to go and create one. So I'll make a new file, save it in desktop, and call it hello.txt. Um, I'll put something in it. Hello, this is web dev. Okay, that's not creative, but whatever. <laughs> That's not what Node.js is for. So, OK, we, we got our JavaScript, and we have our file. So how do we run this? Once we install Node.js, we get the Node command line program that we could use to run Node.js files. So I'm going to go to desktop, and what I will do is, let me see, the file is here file access.js. So I'm going to say node file access.js. So this will run my program. Let's try that. OK, so I got file copied, which was printed right here. So I'm assuming that these two lines were um, executed successfully. Um, let's check that. So I'm going to open hi.txt if it's there. OK. So this is the desktop. This is hi.txt. Okay, and we could say that we could see that the content is written there. So this is a basic usage of the um, FS module, but if you're building web applications, you never want to do this um, because when you do something synchronously. It will block the server and not let it respond to other requests. So if other people are trying to access your website, like they would just be waiting for it to load. And if, it, if the synchronized uh, function never f ends, then they would wait forever. And this might crash your browser. So the way we want to do it is we want to do it asynchronously using callback functions, just like we use jQuery for. So to do it asynchronously, um, it's easy. All we have to do is take away this word, but then there is a catch. Since this is asynchronous, we won't be getting the data back here. What we would be getting it, we'll be getting it in a callback function. So it would be function, 
And it, the callback gets two parameters. The first one is the error, which we could call as error. Uh, the second one is the content. So I'm not going to have the content here. Uh, inside here, we could do the same thing, fs.write file. And we could say hi.txt. Um, give it the content. And it also takes a callback function. And as you can guess, the callback function would be called when the file is done copying. So again, the reason we do that is um, when we use the um, FS module, we're accessing disk, which might be slow. So we kind of want to do it behind the scenes, not while we're executing the main code. So let's see what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to save this, delete everything in hi.txt, and run the program again. OK, it also said file copied, um, which means that read file was executed, the content were read, then write file was executed, and this callback function signaled that the writing was done. Um, let's check hi. Okay. Hello, this is web dev. So, we got it. Um, so, now you might be thinking, like, we have a lot of callback functions inside each other, and this might get messy. So, Node.js no created the concept of streams, which means that if your application is trying to read something that might be slow, you could create a stream and then pipe it into another stream and the content would be done like um, transferred behind the scenes. Um, so what we could do is we could make a, write, a read stream and the write stream and just connect them. So that's the third way of um, building applications in Node.js. So to do that, um, we could say var reader equal fs fs.create read stream and we give it the name of the file so hello.txt and then we can create a writer stream so I would say var writer equal fs.create um, write stream um, this time I have to, I'll only give it the path of the output file. Now, the way you could connect the data from the reader to the writer in Node.js is simple. All you have to do is say reader dot pipe writer and um, the file will be transferred. So, let's try to run that. I'm going to delete what's in hi.txt and run this program. Okay, I didn't get file copied, and the reason is that um, I don't have it written here. So if I want to check if the file is copied, what I want to do is I want to add an event to the reader. So I could say reader.onEnd and give it a function and say console.log file copied. And what end does is once the reading, like, you read everything in the stream, which is the file stream. Um, this event would be emitted, and then call um, the log would be called. So let's try this again. Okay, so it said file copied. And here. So do we all start seeing what the structure of Node.js applications look, looks like? So. Um, First, we have the requires, which we use to import the modules we'll be using. And then we have the code that we need. And if anything would ha is slow, um, because the server doesn't want to block, we could um, put it in callback functions. Or if you want to go more low level, you could use Node.js streams as we did here. But streams can get complicated when you big, bigger, build bigger applications. All right, so um, we looked at reading and writing files. Um, as a server, this is not very helpful. 
And especially if you're trying to build that server for an application that's being used a lot, like a messaging server. So um, let's look at another thing we could do with Node.js, which is getting server information. Um, so to do that, we could save the data as we did here um, in a file and run it. But I'm going to show you a different tool that Node.js provides us, which is called the Node REPL. So um, to run Node.js applications, usually you will say Node and then put the file name. But then if we say Node alone and we don't put any file name, <coughs> it opens what's called the REPL, which is, um, I think, um, read, evaluate, print loop. But basically what this means is that whenever you type any command, it would print whatever was returned. And Python also has a tool like that. I think Ruby also has one. Java doesn't because it's a compiled language. Um, so let's see um, what can we get about the server status um, that, we, that would be helpful for building and scaling web applications. Um, so it's, um, one very helpful module that we'll be using is the OS module, which stands for operating system. So we can say var OS equal require OS. And basically what I'm doing here is that I'm running code line by line like we do in the Chrome developer tools in the web browser. So now I have the, vari the variable OS. Let's see what, let's try to go to the documentation and see what OS has. Um, so this is OS. Okay, we have a CPUs function. Let's try that and see what, what it returns. CPUs. Okay, that's interesting. So um, this is showing that I have four CPUs on my computer, which I have a quad-core laptop, so um, this is it. Now, this would be helpful in that you could write one program and put it on any server, and then by seeing dynamically how many CPUs you could have, you could increase the utilization to 100% without really writing code for this particular server. Uh, let's see what other things the OS has. Arc. I have no idea what this is. Maybe architecture? Let's try that. Oh, okay, yeah. X64. Since I have 64-bit, that's what the architecture is like. Um, and there are lots of other stuff we could look at. Platform. Let's look at total memory. OS total, total mem. Okay, um... I think this is for gigabytes, <laughs> but it's um, written in number of bytes. Uh, actually, let's check. So, 5124, 1, 1024, 4, 4. Yeah, it is four gigabytes. Um, and as you can see here, um, the OS.CPUs returns an array, which is a JavaScript object. So, if you wanted to know how many CPUs our computer has, we would just use whatever array is used, which is the length property. Um, okay, so I guess that's enough system information for now. Um, you could look at the documentation to see what other stuff we need. Um, it's all over here. And yeah, um, to exit the node REPL, you want to press Control C twice, and then this will get you back to your terminal. Oh, okay. So, um, so far we talked about um, file system functions. We saw how to read information about the operating system. But how is this helpful for building web applications? Like this is GT Web Dev. So, this is where the HTTP module comes in. So, as you can guess, HTTP module lets us build web servers and web clients. So, let's take a look at how that works. And I'm going to save it in a different file just so that I could get back to it later. So I'll say HTTP um, server.js. So as before, um, to import the HTTP module, you could say var HTTP equal require HTTP. And now, using this variable, we get access to all the functions that it provides. So one important function is um, 
I would say var server equal http dot create server um, and what this function takes it takes a callback that has a request and a response object which I'm gonna call rec and res so the rec object would, would let you see the data that the client sends to the server and the response object has functions to let you talk back to the client and after we get the server we want to listen on a port so that it becomes visible from the outside so to do that we would say server dot listen and we give it the port number so I'm gonna choose um, 3000 okay um, so let's try to run that and see what happens let's say node HTTP dash server. Okay, I'll go to my web browser and I'll type localhost, which points to my own computer's address, column 3000. Okay, we see that it's loading, but nothing is really happening. Okay, what if the server is, was not on? What, what would happen then? Oh, okay, it would say the web page is not available. Okay, this means that our Node.js application actually captured the request from the client, but it did not respond back, so our web browser was, was waiting for it to respond back. Um, so, here, let's respond, respond back and see what would happen. So, remember with the FS module, I said that we could have read and write streams? So, in the HTTP module, Rec and Dress are exactly that. The request object is a read stream, so it lets you read what the client sends us. And the response object is a write stream, so it lets us um, write what the client would see. So let's try something. Um, so the, the request object has two events, and since um, network like reading from network, downloading data and uploading data is a slow process. It's also asynchronous. So um, the way Node.js does it in its low-level API is that it gives us the data in chunks rather than giving us everything. So to capture the data, we have to say rec.on data and give it a callback function that would get the data. Um, uh, let's try to do like an echo server as like just copies whatever we get. So we could just say rest dot write data. Um, actually, before we do that, maybe we can just say rest dot write hello. Okay, so the reason this is still loading is that we wrote hello and the client received it, but the connection was never closed. So uh, we'd have to close the connection after we write to a stream. So I think we do it using end. Uh, let's try that. Yeah, so I sent hello and the client was waiting for more data. But when I said end, the server told the client, this is all I have. So the client went and rendered what it received. Um, so let's try to do something more interesting so right now we send data back to the client how do we accept data to accept data what we need to do is as we as I was doing before and stopped is I would say rec dot on data and give it a function that accepts the data and um, there is another event which I'm going to use now. I'll tell you what it does later on, but I guess you got it. Um, so, what this says, the lines here, is that once um, I receive everything from the client, I want to tell the uh, tell the server that I'm done sending my stuff. And rec on data. This is where I get the data from the client from. So when we go like from the web browser, we won't be getting any data. So if we do like press start write um, data, 
we wouldn't see anything. So I'm going to restart the server. Go here. See, it's empty. Because when the client went to the server, it did not send any data with it. So the server responded with the same response, which is empty response. Uh, what if you wanted to try to use some data? So to do that, let's open Postman. Um, if you guys don't know what Postman is, um, Pramod talked about it last week. And it's a tool that lets us send HTTP requests using the web browser. So to download it, you could have just Google um, Postman, and it comes as a Chrome extension. Um, once you do that, you should come to this page. And what I want to do is I want to make a post request, which lets me put some data. And then I will go to the body tab. And in the URL, make sure that you have HTTP colon slash slash lo localhost colon 3000. So let's try to type some data. So I'm going to say hello from the client side. Okay, that was a bad joke. Um, but <laughs> Let, let's say that and see what happens. Okay, so the server responded. This is the response. And the server also responded with what we sent it. And the way it did it is that here we're getting the data and chunks, and then we're writing get back to the stream. So, okay, we said these are streams, so can we simplify this a little bit? And we indeed can. So to do all of this, the, I could have only done rec.pipe res, and then this would get all the data that comes from the request and puts it back on the response. So if I run the server again and do this, I see the same response. Okay, um, so this is as far as I'm going to go on the HTTP module because if you want to build web applications, um, unless you really care about performance and optimization, you probably don't want to get into the low-level details of the streams and chunks and data and responses in this way. So uh, we'll be using another tool that's very popular in Node.js that I'll get to in a moment. So uh, before we do that, so once you installed Node.js on your computers, you also installed a different tool called NPM, which is Node Package Manager. Uh, so as I said, this comes with Node.js. And what NPM does is it's like a GitHub for Node.js modules. Um, it makes it really easy to add dependencies. So, you know, in Java, if you want to add some dependency or code from somewhere else, you'd have to download a jar file, then link it somehow, and, like, spend so much time with your IDE trying to figure stuff out. NPM is a really simple tool. All you need to do is run, like, a small command in your command line. It would get all the dependencies and save them for you, and then you could just require them like we required all other modules. So... I'm going to uh, look at a module called Express, which is a higher level web framework. So it's similar to the HTTP module, but it makes things a lot easier for us. So it gets rid of everything called streams, and it's like on the back, behind the scenes, it collects all the data and puts it in a response and request object. And we just have everything. And we want, when we want to write back, we just say write, and the client will get everything without worrying about network stuff. So to install Express.js, um, actually, before we install Express.js, we should there is something that we should always do inside any Node.js project. So first, we want to say npm init. Uh, this is like initialize. And what it does is that it creates a JSON file that describes your project. But not only that, it also adds all the dependencies that you have to that JSON file, so that if anyone else downloads your project, he could type one command that downloads all the dependencies for him and he can run the application. So um, we could give it a name. I'll call it Express Server. OK, I can't have caps. OK, uh, Express Server. Version, I'll just leave 1.0. No description. Entry point, this doesn't mean much. I, I'll just call it main.js. Test command, git repository, blah, blah, blah. OK. Is this OK? Yes. So right now, if you look inside 
our, um, on our desktop, you would see that there's a package.json file that was created here. And let, let's look at what the package.json file has. So it has the name, version, description, main, scripts, author, and license. Okay, that's good. So now let's go ahead and install Express. So um, when you think install, you could, um, I usually think that this would modify anything on my computer. But in Node.js, since this is JavaScript, Installing is actually just downloading, and sometimes there is like compiling JavaScript files, but it's not like installing an application. So anything you install this way is going to be local to your project. So without further ado, let's start. So I'm going to say npm install express, and then I'm going to follow it with dash dash save which saves the dependency in my package.json so that other people would know. And I'll press enter, it will take a while. So right now it, would, it downloaded Express and it also downloaded all the dependencies that Express has. And this, this process is kind of recursive, so all of these modules have a package.json that has dependencies and NPM would go through all of these and make a tree of modules and install them for you. So let's look at our package.json right now. So we can see that we got dependencies and it says express 4.13.4. And what this tilde means, or I don't know what is this called. OK. Anyone knows what this is called? Carrot. Oh, carrot, yeah. So this means that uh, this would be compatible with version 4.13.4 or anything beyond that, as long as the major version is still 4. So if it becomes 5, um, this might not support it. So you have to go and add it manually. And the reason this is good is that if you give anyone your project, the package.json and, and all the other files, um, he could just say npm install without anything else. And what this would do is that this would go and install all the dependencies. So since we already installed Express, um, it's not going to do anything. And you, can, you will notice that there is a new folder created here called node modules. And this is where Express was saved. So when you say npm install, it actually creates this folder and puts all your modules over there. Um, OK, so now we got the module. Let's create a new file and start using Express. Um, Question, yeah. So what did you do before you installed Express? The npm init? Yeah. OK. Um, so I'll repeat that. Let me <coughs> try something. OK, so when you um, run npm init, this would initialize the folder as a Node.js project. And the way it does that is that it creates this package.json file. So I'm going to do this again, just to show you. So I'll say I'm going to delete package.json and say npm init. So you can think of the package.json as a file that has a metadata of your project. Um, so like a name, you could give it a name, which doesn't really mean much here. Um, you could give it the version. So if you press enter, you would have the default one in the parentheses. And Um, the reason I did that is if I say npm install express save and I don't have a package.json file already there, then it would not save the dependency. And if I give this project to someone else, like I give you my code and you try to run it, it would say express not found. And you would not know you might not know what why why is it doing that. But if we have the dependency over here and uh, it's not found, then you could run npm install without any other arguments and then npm would look at the package.json and see all the dependencies and install them for you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to create a new folder called um, a new file called express server.js. 
And here I'm going to use this new module that we just installed from the internet. So I'll start by saying var express equal require express. See, it's that simple. We got a third party module. And um, whenever you want to start working with express, the first thing you want to do is create an express app. And the way we do that is we would say var app equal express, and we call this. So uh, now app is an interface for us to create route handlers. So if on the web browser you go to slash, you could respond to it. And if you go like to slash index.html, you could respond some, some other way or anything you want. So we could say slash bazooka, and you could respond to that. So let's try it. So to do that, we could say app.get. And we put, put everything after the host name. So I'll say like slash pizza. And then like the HTTP module, we, get, we have a callback function that has a request and response object. But this time, request and response, they're not Node.js streams, but they're actually useful objects for web developers. Um, and if we want to respond a certain way, we just say like rest, which is the response, dot send. And we can say, no more pizza left, which is sad, but it's the truth. And like with a server, we need to listen to some port. So I'm going to say app.listen and give it port 3000 and save this. I'm going to run this file, node express-server. And I would say bazooka, it would say cannot get slash. And that's because we don't have a route handler for slash. But if we do slash pizza, we get no more pizza left, which is what we define in our handler. Okay, so this is a way to have the dynamic stuff. Then what if we want to serve static files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript files? So Express comes with a useful tool called express.static. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say express.u, wait, sorry. I'll say app.use. And what this does is this is like get, but it captures all requests. And then um, whatever the tool is that's inside would capture the request and response to it. So I'm going to use express.static. And what this does is it looks in the files and the directory you give it. And if any of the files matches the path that the user went to, it would return the content of the file. So Node.js has a global called underscore underscore dir name. And this is the current working directory that you ran Node.js from. So I'm going to use that and save the file and run it. OK. So let me see what's on my desktop. OK, I have a hello.txt. Let's try to do that and see what happens. OK, so we got this, the contents of that file, hello.txt. Um, now, I did a very bad security problem in my code. Um, what I did is I just exposed the server-side code to the client. So if someone goes this way and says express-server.js, he can get everything that's running on the back end, which is my code. And by exposing this code, any hacker can go and see any bugs with it and break my server. And yeah, I'll be fired. <laughs> so what I want to do is that whenever you want to use express.static, you want to have all your static files in one directory that's away from all your code. And by, by convention, this directory is called public. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder called public on desktop. And I'll only move, um, actually I'll move high. I'll move high.txt to that folder. 
So it's the only file that's being served. And now when I go to my application, okay, so I want to add um, public over here. Now there's a common bug that many developers fall into, is that we don't know, does underscore underscore dir name have a slash at the end of it, or does it not? So if it does, we'll end up having two slashes, which will break our code. And if it does, it will work. But then this will not work. So Node.js has a module just for this solving this problem, and it's called path. So to import the module, we could say var path equal require path. And this is built into Node.js. So if you go to the Node.js documentation, you would see this um, module. And it has a function called path.join. And we can give it both names without a slash. And then path would actually figure out if there are any slashes that are duplicated or any slashes that are missing and add these. So let's save this and restart the server. Okay, so we don't have access to express.server.js. Do we have access to hi? Oh yeah, we do. Okay. So this is how we serve static files with Express. Um, question? So can you go um, one level up? Like, you type dot dot. Okay, that's a good question. So Scott asked, can you go one level up by having two dots over here? Um, so if you use a file system library like FS to host your server, and then you can, and then you could do bad stuff. You could go back, back to the root and wipe the entire computer. But what Express does is that it knows that this, it's built for web developers, not really system admins. So whenever you have a dot dot, it will just remove them and not let you do that. That's a good question. Uh, So to repeat what we just did here, um, we had um, a dynamic URL, um, a dynamic code being generated here. And we also used um, Express to host the static files. So if you wanted, we could actually make a REST API, just like the ones that we used last week, um, the face recognition. And we could say, like, um, recognize faces and have all the code that's needed over here and then send the response back. And at the same time, we could serve static files that won't change. So basically, this is what Express looks like. Um, so I think to tie everything together, so we looked at client side alone, we looked at REST APIs alone, and now we looked at the server side alone. Yeah, question? Uh, can you go back to your code for a second? Sure, yeah, sorry. <coughs> Are you good? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, so. Um, so far, what we did is in the first few meetings, we worked on client side alone. And last meeting, we worked on the REST API without really building the backend. We used an existing backend. And now we just looked at, this, at the backend without really building any of the client side tools. So, um, what we, I want to go through now is show you how we could connect all of these together to build a really simple chat application um, using Express, um, HTML, JavaScript, and REST APIs. So, yeah, we're going to write a chat application. So let's do that. So I'm going to make a new folder called um, express-chat. And I'll go into it. Um, and I'm going to say npm install express. OK. And I want to open that folder on from Sublime Text. And I'll create a new, uh, 
file first and um, actually before we do that let's just start by working on the client side then we work on the API side and finally we work on the um, backend side so I will start by making a folder called um, public as we did before to store the client stuff, the static files that won't change. And in this folder I'm gonna make a file called um, chat.html and I will start by typing the HTML um, boilerplate. Um, so we have an HTML tag, uh, we have a head with a title and uh, the title would be um, Express Chat. Uh, that's it for the head for now. Let's have a body. So, what do we want to include on this page? I think first we can include um, a header that says Express Chat. And then we want to we could have an element that contains the messages that people would read. So I'll make a div and give it an ID of messages. And after that, we need a form, like a way to enter the, the messages. So I'm going to have two elements. I will have a name. So um, I would say, um, I'm going to put that inside the label. So I'll say name, I'll have an input with ID name field, um, and then I'm going to have a break to have a new line, and I'll have an another field called message, which would have our message, and this time I want to have, instead of using an input, I want to use a text area. And the difference, as like, you will see now, is that a text area would let us put more than one line in the message. Um, so I would call it text area with ID message field. And I'll close the label. All right, so I'm going to um, save this file and open it in a web browser to see what I just did. Um. Okay, so what we just built is really simple. We had a title. We have a small area that would later cont contain text. It doesn't have anything right now. Um, we have a name field, and we have a message text area. I know the styles look bad, but um, You'd ha I'll have to apologize on that <laughs> because um, we want to focus on the entire application right now and not spend too much time thinking about styles. So I'm missing something. Um, I'm missing a button that lets me submit or send the message. So I'm going to have an input um, and give it the ID um, send button and I will say type equals submit which would make it look like a button instead of a text. And I'll say value equals send. So this would be the text that goes inside the button. So I'm going to save that and see what... Okay, I got my button here. And to make things easier for us in development, I'm going to go and add jQuery. So if you go to Google and type jQuery CDN, it should take you to this website, code.jQuery.com. And if you click on, let's try, try this, click on minified jQuery 1.x, you get this, this URL. So I'm going to copy it, go here, I'll say script, source equal, and I'll paste the URL that I got. and close it. So to check that this worked and I got jQuery, um, 
I'm, j I'm gonna open the JavaScript console. You can open it by clicking on the menu, more tools and developer tools, and then clicking on console. I'm gonna say dollar. Okay, so if you get this, it means jQuery was um, imported. So we got the client side. Now what we wanna do is we have the UI. Now we want to con like communicate with the back end um, using the REST API to send the messages. So what we need is a JavaScript file on the client, and I'm gonna call it um, the chat.js. <coughs> and this file would have um, what we need to load the data from the server and display it on the client in the, in the browser. So right now, since this is a client-side JavaScript file, I'm going to add it to public. So I'll say new file, and I'll save it as chat.js. And I will start as we started last time. So we have $document.ready, and give it a function. And what this does, it runs the this JavaScript once the entire um, HTML file is loaded and displayed on the in the browser. So what do we want to do here? Um, so when we think in terms of events, we want to capture the send button events. So when we click send, we want something to happen. So the way we do that is we would select um, the send button and say click and give it a function. And this means that when the send button is clicked, the code in here will be executed. And what we want is we want to get the name. So we would say var name equal. So we need to get the name input field, which we gave the ID of um, name field. Then we say dot val and run this. This would give, a, give us the value or whatever is inside the field. We do the same for message. So now we have the data that we want to send to the server. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var data equal, I'm just going to make another object and give it a name key with the value of name and the message key value of message. Actually this might look a little confusing. I'm just going to copy this and put it here and copy this and put it here. But it's essentially the same thing. Now, once we have our data, when we click the button, we want to make a post request to send some data. So the way we do that using jQuery is we have a $.ajax and it gets an object. Um, okay, I forgot something, so let me check. Okay. So it gets a type, which we will call post, and then it gets a URL, which we'll say slash messages. So we're posting to a messages collection. Um, and then we want to give it some data. So I would say data. And um, to send the data as a JSON, what we need to do is say json.stringify um, data. And if we don't do that, then it will send it in a format called URL encoded, which is like exactly what you see in the URL when you have different fields. You'd have like question mark, key equal value, and key equal value. But when we say json.stringify, it converts it to JSON and sends it like that. Um, and once we do that, we also want to specify the content type. And we say application. That's JSON. And then we get we have a success callback. Uh, which like once we send the data, we could just um, I think what what's what we want to do is once we hit send, so if I had my name here and a message, I would expect this text to be removed from the message to show that it was actually sent. So the way we do that is we select the field. 
and we say val, and we give it the new value that we want to have there. So if we give it an empty string, it's just going to erase what's in, inside. Okay, so I'm going to save this and refresh the page. I'll have my name here in the message. Okay. Um, oops. Um, so we see here an error mm -hmm. appears and it says that cross origin requests are not supported. And this only happens when you open a file using um, the file protocol. But when we open it using the HTTP protocol, like once we serve it, we wouldn't get this error. So I think this is good for the client side. Let's transition to the server side for a moment. Um, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to make a file outside public. And I will save it as main.js. Um, I think I don't have express installed, do I not? Um, okay, actually, no, it's something in Node.js. I'm just going to do this. Um, I can explain later on if you're interested in knowing why I needed to do that. Okay. Maybe I need an npm init. Um, this was not required before. Okay, yeah. So, I guess with the newer versions of Node.js, you actually need to do an npm init before you do an npm install. Yeah, I just realized that. Um, but cool, we have the Node modules folder, and make sure that you have it. Um, if you don't have it, make like run npm init and then run npm install. So let's get back to our application. So in main.js, first we want to have express. So I'll say var express equal require express. And we want to have our express app. So we do app equal express. And we want to have this um, serve the static files. So I'll say app.use express.static underscore underscore dir name wait um i forgot path.join require path and what i will do here is i'll say path.join dir name and public i'll say app.listen on port 3000 so let's save this and run it from here and go to localhost 3000 and slash chat.html since this is what we saved it as okay so we do say, see it here and right now when we send a message we see a different error which says 404 not found and that's because we did not ha we don't have a file called messages um, in the public folder. Hey, right, so we're sending the messages messages to the server. Right now, um, what the server needs to do is that it needs to store the messages. So the re the real way that you should use to store them is using databases. But databases is, is another topic that we're gonna leave for another day. Right now, I'm just gonna use a variable, an object to store. Um, the messages. So I'll say, oops, um, var messages equal array. And I want to listen um, to the post request on slash messages. This will get a function, a request, and a response. Um, so Right now, um, we're sending the data as JSON, but what the server would get it is that it would get it in binary form and it will be stored in a buffer. So Express.js has a tool that lets us convert this data into JSON on the fly. Um, and that's called 
um, body dash parser, but it's kept in a different module. So let's go to our terminal and say npm install body dash parser. Press enter. So what this would do is that this would get the data from the request and then store it as a variable in our request object in Express. So to use the body parser, oops, we would just say var body parser equal require body dash parser. And what the, w the way we need to use it is we would say app.use body parser dot json and call this and once we do that rec dot body would have the data that the client sent to the server so let's just log this to see if it's right I'm gonna restart the server okay So I'm gonna type my name here. I'll say, um, "Yo, <laughs> send." Okay, so we see that the server got the information in the good right format, which is JSON. That's good. So now, what do we expect the server to do? Um, I expect it to store the messages somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say messages dot push. I'll say rec dot body. So right now, the server has all the messages that a client sent in this messages API, um, messages array. So this is the first um, API resource, which is post to messages. Now, we should also be able to read the messages somehow. So to do that, um, what I would do is say app.get and also have the same URL. And what I would respond with um, is I'll say rest.send messages. I'll just send all the messages that I have on the server. So let's run that and see if it works. So I restarted the server. And I'll go to localhost slash messages. Okay, I get an empty array. Let me try to add another message. Yo. Okay. Okay, I, I got this message. So, uh, if we add more messages. I could see all the messages here. So now, the last piece of the puzzle is that we want the client to download the messages from the server and display them so that we could start chatting. So, let's do that. Uh, where we would do it is in public and chat.js, which is the client code. And I'm going to make a new function and call it update messages. And what this function would do is that it would run every like second and get the messages from the server and put them in, the, um, in our message box, which should be here. So to do this, we need... Um, jQuery.ajax, we say type is get, URL is messages, and that's all we need. And we have success, and we give it a function that gets an error. Wait, I don't think it gets an error, it's success. Mm, let me check. Okay, it just gets data, okay. Function that gets data. And now, data has all the messages that we want, right? Um, so, to put them in the box, which we called, let me see, we called messages, what we can do is say, um, first let's empty everything that's in the messages. So I'll say messages dot um, HTML and give it an empty string. And what this would do is that it would set all the HTML inside the messages div to nothing. So it essentially deletes everything that's there. And then what I want to do is say data dot for each. And this is going to be the array of messages. Actually, let's do it. Let's call it, say, var messages 
equal data or just say messages. I could say messages dot for each um, and give it a callback function message. And for every message, I will select the messages box and append a new element um, which is going to be a paragraph that has um, the messages message dot name so the person will send a message and then the word says and then the actual message okay, let me do something uh, Okay, that one not what's not better. Okay. Okay, how, how do I stop this? Um, okay. What? Hey, does anyone know how to stop text trapping? Oh wait, there is an undo. Okay. Command Shift T. Oh P. Okay, it it worked. So yeah, I'm gonna close the paragraph. So yeah, this looks good. What I wanted is I'll get the messages, append a paragraph that has my name then says, then my message, and close it. And then what we want to do is we want to call update messages every once in a while. So the way I do that is I could say set interval um, update messages and say 2000. So I'm going to update the messages every 2000 milliseconds. I'm going to save this. And let me restart the server go to my browser and say hello let's see what I have to oh wait I need to refresh this okay we see that so all that says hello okay let's say some let's do something else um, Sarah okay that's my sister bye okay Sarah says bye and now if we refresh the page we should see that everything is still there uh, so that's it that's actually all you need to make a chat application now you probably want to fix the styles a bit but that's all of it um, now how do you expose this application to e for everyone to have fun um, okay at Georgia Tech we have a firewall so we can't do that <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's a nice tool that we could use um, that I'm gonna use it's called ngrok and I'll say HTTP, I'll say 3000. And now we get this URL. Okay, it worked this time. Without what? Oh, yeah, it has to be without 3000. Yeah, that works. Okay, so. Yeah, we start to see stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. I I like that. <laughs> so, whoa. <laughs> okay, I was ex expecting this to happen. <laughs> Does anyone know why this happened or what what happened? Because your security's bad. Okay, I just say prevent it from. See, this is what happens. 
Okay, so the reason we got this is that I used um, the slash and appended the text as it is. Now, if I say jQuery.text instead of um, appending this, then it would escape the HTML. So whoever wrote this, he used like a slash B or maybe he had some HTML instead of just text in it. And maybe he used a style attribute to make it big and bold. So yeah, that's the chat application. And I guess I'm done with the talk. So if any one of you have any questions, feel free to talk to us. <laughs> and, <laughs> Wait, what happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, someone rejected us. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I guess um, let's right now let's um just spread out and have like a group session, maybe share ideas, and if anyone has any questions, you could talk to us and tell us about all the cool things things you want to build. So yeah, thank you. Sorry, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the project I said two weeks ago about uh, how